Monday, August 4th meeting of the Verona Plan Commission, and we will begin with the roll call, please. Mr. Sarah, if you would. Commissioner Manley. Here. Alderperson Linder. Here. Mayor Holcomer. Here. Commissioner Horsfall. Here. Commissioner Lytle. Here. And Commissioners Ritter and Heinzen are absent and excused. Thank you. We do have a quorum, so we will proceed. Uh, included with your packet were the minutes of the July 7th meeting of the Planning Commission. What is your pleasure? We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Manley. Were there any additions or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried and the minutes are approved. Uh, then next, agenda item number four, we have discussion and possible action. Initial site plan and conditional use permit review to allow for the construction of a 2006 square foot Taco Bell restaurant to be located at 671 Hometown Circle. Mr. Sarah, if you would provide the background, please. Taco Bell is requesting to construct a 2,000 square foot uh, restaurant at the farthest east outlot in front of home in front of Farm and Fleet there. Um, this is the one that would be immediately east of Dairy Queen as you look at it from Rona Avenue. Um, these out parcels were approved in 2007 as part of the Department of Fleet project. It's part of an overall uh, plan unit development entire area. Um, the proposed uh, Taco Bell building would be set back approximately 22 feet from Verona Avenue and 89 feet from uh, Hometown Circle on the eastern side. Uh, one of the items that staff has and the applicant have discussed at, at length is the location of the building. Um, the downtown overlay district uh, prohibits um, parking areas and, and uh, drive throughs between the actual roadway and the, the building itself. Um, one of the things that staff has tried to do is to push the building uh, from the current location as further as east as we can as possible. Um, however, in attempting to do that, uh, Farm and Fleet has raised concerns about the possible uh, visibility of their building from, from Verona Avenue. Um, they're concerned that if the building is pushed to the far eastern part of the proper, property on, along Hometown Circle and Verona Avenue, that they would lose that visibility from uh, Verona Avenue. So as, as a compromise to that, um, uh, Taco Bell has actually added a, a large patio to the site plan. Uh, the patio would be for outdoor uh, seating, outdoor gathering space for the restaurant. Um, it would be an amenity that as you come into the city, you'd see this patio. Um, we haven't had this, seen the details on that yet, but uh, conceptually, I think that's a, it's a good compromise. I think it's a, it's a nice feature to have. Um, one of the things in our downtown overlay district, it does say that it does encourage patios, gardens, seating areas, and similar features in the front yards. Um, so this would go to, to meeting that requirement. Um, so and I, I, th I do think that some parking is appropriate. If you go to the opposite corner for where, where the Little Caesars is and the Orange Leaf, there is parking along Hometown Circle. So there, we've done it before. We've, we've also done it off the, the north side as well too. But I, I do think the patio area would, would buffer uh, and meet the intent of, of the ordinance itself. So staff, staff does support the patio and how the building has been laid out here. Uh, parking, they're proposing 25 parking spaces. The zoning ordinance does require 14 parking spaces. One of the things with the Taco Bell is that they're saying approximately 70% of their service is done through the drive through not actually through people sitting down and actually being in the restaurant. Um, for comparison purposes, Dairy Queen to immediately to the west, they have 41 parking spaces. Um, so this would have 25, which is less than Dairy Queen, but once again, Dairy Queen is more of a catering to that sit down family, having your ice cream versus Taco Bell is more of your pick your food up and go. Access to the site would have two access points onto Hometown Circle. The main access point would be located here approximately, and there would be another access point to the west that would be the exit through the drive through uh, One of the things that staff has recommended is, is actually having a, a connection to the Dairy Queen uh, on the, the west property line here. Uh, that was an access point that when Dairy Queen was approved, there was uh, some language on the site plan that said if and when access to the east was ever you know, when that lot was developed, that access could be could go through that lot. Um, staff recommends that access be or there be an access point there, just for the fact that um, if if you're looking to go to Taco Bell and then possibly to a different restaurant or different uh, building on these out parcels, it'd be nice to avoid people having to turn back onto Hometown Circle and cause additional traffic uh, concerns or issues in the future. Um, so we think of putting an access point here and connecting these two parking lots would be would be the smart thing to do. 
Drainage and stormwater, um, they have a conceptual rain garden shown on the site plan. This will be very similar to what you have at Dairy Queen where the drive through would wrap around the, the stormwater facility. Uh, staff has no concerns with how this is laying out conceptually. Architecturally, uh, the building would contain both EFIS, uh, metal slats, which would be in the front here. These are actually metal slats. And then also stone veneer on the front and also on the east and west elevations. Staff has requested that additional stone veneer be added below the, the windows on all three elevations. That would be similar to other uh, Taco Bells across the country. Uh, the applicant has, has agreed to do that. Um, one thing to point out, just so the Planning Commission is aware, uh, behind the metal slats will be LED lights. Those will be illuminated during the evening. Um, just so you're aware that will be in place and it, it will be visible. Um, one item that I do recommend that they continue to take a look at is the actual trash location. Right now it's located oh, in the northwest corner of the property. I recommend they take a look at a site right behind the building similar to what, what Dairy Queen did. It, it would help screen that facility and also just kind of tuck it in a little better instead of having it stick out in, in the open there. Um, with that, there is no action on this tonight, uh, so staff recommends the Planning Commission review the submitted materials and provide feedback to the applicants. I know the applicant is here tonight and she'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Any uh, initial thoughts, feedback? From the Planning Commission, Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for the applicant, I, I wonder if you're the also the owner of the Taco Bell in Fitchburg that's in the um, vicinity of where Target and Hy-Vee is located, or if you're familiar with that. It, if you would come to the podium, if you wouldn't mind, please. Hi, I'm Ellen Selly. I'm with GPD Group, and this is Ryan. He's the civil engineer. He's with Qualm. Um, and no, I'm not really familiar with that, and I don't believe that it's the same owner. I don't know if it's corporate or if, if, if it's a franchisee store. Okay. I just wanted to bring that one up because, it, it, and I apologize, I actually wanted to try and go out of my way to drive past it uh, before the meeting today, and I didn't get a chance to do so, but for, for, for some reason, I was thinking that they have more stone on that building than what's proposed in the uh, elevations that we have today. And, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that between now and uh, the next meeting, maybe we could take a look at that and, and see if that is indeed the case. Uh, because I, I think that's a very nice looking building there. And certainly um, in terms of, of the... Uh, architecture and materials certainly a lot nicer than some other Taco Bells that okay. that we've seen throughout the Madison area. Well this one is a combination of the stone and EFIS but um, I think we added more stone to meet some of your code requirements so if you have code requirements I can take those back to Taco Bell or if you have staff recommendations I can take those back as well. Um, you okay. We can just work between now and the next meeting then. Okay sounds good thank you. Otherwise I think it's a Nice looking building. Thank you. Other other thoughts? Mr. Linder? Um, I, I guess I didn't. I, what's your um, position with this Taco Bell? Are you going to be the owner? Or? Oh, no, I'm, I'm with the architect, and then I'm also representing the um, re representing Taco Bell. Okay. Is there any Taco Bells in the area that are going to be this design? These, this is the new prototype for Taco Bell, so all new Taco Bells being built will be this style, not that um, kind of like bell style that we were used to. Um, this is the new uh, kind of more modern look to the building. And those metal slats with the, with the LEDs that Adam was talking about earlier, those lights reflect towards the building, and so they just kind of illuminate and give off a, a subtle purple hue. It's not like they direct out or anything. Do, do you have any actual pictures of any of them like this? I do, but I didn't bring them with me, so I can send them to Adam, and then he yes, can send them to you. Yes, it'd be good to have right. for the next next meeting. Okay. Um, so who who's going to be owning this? Uh, it will be Taco Bell. Taco Bell owns. Okay. All right. Um, and I guess a question for Adam. So I just wanted to make sure I understand. So downtown overlay district says you can't have a parking lot between the building and hometown circle on the <coughs> east side. What the overlay district says, it says you can have parking between the building and roadway. It does not specify um, which road. 
Hmm. Um, okay. You know, I know with the Dairy Queen was approved, obviously there's a parking lot between the building and the north side of Hometown Circle. Um, and obviously with the multi-tenant building, when that was built, there is a parking lot kind of fronting the, the, the western end of that Hometown Circle as well too. But it doesn't say which road. It just I think the I, my personal belief is more the intent of it obviously is to Rona Avenue. That's kind of the intent of the whole overlay district. But it, it isn't specific on saying that. Okay. Are you guys okay with having uh, um, the patio there and all that? I mean, it's you guys are. Yeah, Taco Bell has approved this layout. Okay. And what about the uh, connection to the Dairy Queen? They would not like to see that the connection. Okay. Um, we believe that the hometown circle will be suffice for connecting and kind of be a, a side road that's not on the main traffic but should be sufficient for the for what, the need what about the trash the the trash enclosure they'd like to see it where it is um as far away from the drive through as possible so when you're sitting in the drive through lane you're not smelling the trash but um if if it needs to go by the building again it, it if it's one of your staff re requirements or part of your code then I'll have to take that back to Taco Bell, and they'll have to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Personally, personally, I like I like the idea of having it closer because I I would like to see a connection between the two. I know we talked about that when we Dairy Queen went in, having a connection between the lot next to it. I don't know if that's something we can force or not. I don't know, but obviously you're not for it. I just looking for feedback today. I'd like to see that. Um, and that, and like I said, I like to see pictures of it of what this actually looks like. Um, in general, it looks fairly decent, but it'd be nice to see a real building with this kind of design um, with a picture as opposed to just a drawing. Of course. Thanks. Mr. Manley? Based on kind of what we've seen here, I think that the, um, the Taco Bell that was recently built at the corner of Odana and Whitney Way looks like it would, like it's this prototype. Um, so if anyone's interested in kind of taking a real a, a real world look at it, so to speak, I think it's that would be a good example. I'll have to check it out too. Thank you. Other comments from Planning Commission? Comments, questions? Mr. Lytle, please. Um, this will, uh, as a restaurant with the drive-through, need a conditional use permit. Is that right, Adam? Yes. Um, what have you thought about proposed hours of operation? Is that standard or does it uh, vary based on the location of the restaurant? It's pretty much standard. Um, all Taco Bells are serving breakfast now, so it will open around 7 a.m. and close at 2 a.m. But um, it will be up to the manager for those exact times. It could open a little earlier and typically Thursday, Friday, and Saturday it might be open until about 4 o'clock in the morning. And do you have the same hours for drive through as you do for uh, the sit down? I believe drive throughs open those hours, but okay. the actual sit down isn't open that late. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Thanks. Other questions or comments? Feedback? I guess the, the only other question I have, I'll echo the, the uh, prior comments that were made. Um, just wondering what the timeline is if you are granted the approvals, when would you move forward? Uh, this would be a construction for 2015. I'm not for sure when though yet. Okay. All right, excellent. Any other questions, comments? Go ahead, Mr. Linder. Maybe I just want to be clear. I, I think a Taco Bell location there is a good spot for it. I, I just had some, you know, questions on some of the minor stuff, but in general, I'm, I'm for the idea of having one there. Good, thank you. Mr. Lytle. Um, I'll just uh, note that this is one of a few items that I've actually received a fair amount of feedback for beforehand. And um, unfortunately, just to share with you, there isn't a lot of excitement in the community, at least the people that have contacted me, about adding more fast food to East Verona Avenue. Um, that being said, I think this is probably, uh, it makes sense for a location in terms of, uh, and you obviously think so as well, in terms of, what's happening uh, across the street. Um, I know there are concerns about um, making sure that it's safe for pedestrians to cross from the south side of Rhone Avenue to the north side. Um, 
I do think that hopefully us as a community and seeing a variety of sit-down restaurants uh, not make it for a number of reasons can take a little bit of time and uh, spend some time. I think the, the citizens would appreciate knowing is there a common theme we're seeing for sit-down, slow food, locally owned restaurants not making it in terms of is it either traffic projections, is it just the difficulty of financing right now in this environment, but um, the feedback I've gotten is that folks would like to see us focus on uh, more local slow food and less on national chains and fast food, but uh, I don't want to translate that as uh, not uh, being favorable to your project. Just want to make sure we meet all the requirements and um, make sure that uh, we, if we're promoting folks crossing the street from the south side at the ball fields, that they have a way to do it safely. Thanks. Good comment. Thank you, Patrick. Seeing no other comments, we look forward to hearing back from you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have a public hearing on a zoning ordinance text amendment to modify the city's floodplain zoning ordinance amending the flood insurance study maps due to a recent mapping updates from the Department of Natural Resources and the specific section to be modified would be 13-2-5 parent C. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Horsfall. All those in favor of opening the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. The public hearing is open, and I will ask Mr. Sarah if he'd provide the background, please. To so the public hearing to amend the city's floodplain zoning ordinance. Um, the DNR notified the city in June that, our, that updates had occurred to some of the Dane County flood insurance rate study maps. Um, none of these actual updates actually impacted the city, but the map number changed. Um, so in order to stay in compliance with the actual National Flood Insurance Program, we have to update our ordinance, and which involves, well, basically uh, changing a letter A to letter C in our ordinance on the map numbers. Um, like I said, this actually has, this has zero impact to the city of Rona, but it's a formality that we have to kind of go through and make sure that we stay in compliance with the, the, the national requirements. Thank you, Mr. Sayre, for that explanation. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this issue under public hearing? Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak? I'm not seeing anyone in the audience, so I would ask for a motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion by Mr. Lytle, seconded by Mr. Linder. All those in favor of closing the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Uh, this agenda item, if we were to take action, would be a recommendation to the Common Council. What is your pleasure? Mr. Linder? I'll make a motion uh, to recommend approval to the Common Council that they adopt the amendments to 12, excuse me, to 13-2-5C, amending the flood insurance study maps. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Horsfall. We are open for discussion on the motion. Is there any discussion, Mr. Lytle? We'll keep this meeting short. I promise. Uh, how, so you're saying that it's has really zero changes for the city of Verona. Do you know how many parcels in the city, how many properties are even subject to uh, national flood insurance program coverage? I, oh, ooh, there we go. Mr. Gunlock? Several hundred. Okay. Are those improved parcels or mostly they are? Just curious. Thank you. Are there other questions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Uh, next, we have a public hearing on zoning ordinance text amendment to modify the city's zoning ordinance landscaping plant selection and plant classification requirements. Specific sections to be modified include the repeal and recreation of 13-1-250 and the repeal of Appendix L of Chapter 1 of Title 13. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? We have a motion by Mr. Manley. Is there a second? Second. 
Second by Mr. Horsfall. All those in favor of opening the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. Sayer, if you'd provide the background, please. This is a request from the city to amend our landscaping requirements. The current, currently, the zoning ordinance has two sections that list out plant species that can be planted um, for private development projects. Um, we went through and actually just updated those lists. Um, so what we're recommending doing is provide to, to basically update the list that's in table 13-1-250 and then repeal the same list that was in Appendix L. Um, the updated list was reviewed by horticulturists at EPIC and also the city's park and forestry director. Um, we, we eliminated a lot of the invasive plants, some of the plants that are ash trees are being killed off by uh, bugs. And we also took out some trees that would be poor growing in, in Wisconsin conditions. Um, in general, the horticulturists at EPIC and the city's park and forestry director were supportive of the changes. They felt comfortable with it. Um, and this will just provide an updated list to, for developers as they look at projects and making sure that they're planting things that will hopefully survive and, and do better in the city. Um, so st with that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend the Common Council approval, approval of the Zoning Order Amendments to amend Section 13-1-250 and also uh, repeal of Appendix L of Chapter 1 of Title 13. Thank you, Mr. Sir. We are in the public comment or public hearing stage um, of this agenda item. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak? Hi, my name is Luke Diaz. I uh, live on Melody in, in Verona. Um, I just want to say that I um, obviously support this. I think um, that it's been a long time since the plant lists were looked at in, in the Verona Code, and there was some stuff that I think people 20, 30, or whoever knows how long ago it was made, you know, that they thought things like Japanese barberry were, were good to plant, and there's just some recent research about things not fitting, the, fitting into the ecology, and, and specifically with Japanese barberry, it, it's conducive to ticks and the spread of Lyme disease, at least in some studies. Um, so I think just eliminating certain plants is a good thing, but as long as I was in there, I thought it made sense to also give people more options and more potential things they could do, so not just to take things away. Um, <clears throat> and it also encourages resilience and variety in planting, which can, you know, won't save us from whatever the next emerald ash borer, chestnut blight, Dutch elm disease, or whatever it is. It won't save us from it, but it might lessen the impact. Um, and then just uh, two quick notes. Um, one, in an earlier iteration, I had had also proposed modifi modifying the point system. However, Adam had some concerns that I couldn't actually answer, so that's been taken <coughs> out of this proposal. Um, and that also s a couple of the plants that were eliminated, um, the blueberries and bog birch, were specifically eliminated because they require acidic soils, which I knew going in. Um, however, after speaking with Epic's horticulturist, uh, she advised that, you know, assuming that landscaping companies no soil types and know what they're doing is not actually a good assumption to make. So that's why they were pulled out. Um, other than that, I, I, I urge you to um, forward this uh, ordinance, the proposed ordinance change on to the city council. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not seeing anyone else in the audience, so I would accept the motion to close the public hearing. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Lytle. All those in favor of closing the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Uh, again, this item, if we were to take action, would be a recommendation to the Common Council. Questions, comments, potential motions? Mr. Manley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Adam, I was, I was wondering um, about the, the, the changes and, and the um, the, the types of trees that were eliminated. Um, Mr. Diaz had, had mentioned just a couple of them. Are there any other ones that, that stand out that are a more common type of planting that we see typically in uh, landscaping installations in the city? Mr. Sir? The big one obviously was ash trees. Mm -hmm. That was the big one. And I, I think there may have been one maple that was pulled out. Um, I think it may have been autumn blaze, I'm not sure. Um, but I, yeah, th those are the ones I, c I can only think of off the top of my head. 
Um, and, I, and, I, and I could be wrong on that too, but um, like I said, we just had, we went through it and did an update on it. It was one of those we hadn't looked at it since the code was adopted. Um, but I, I don't think that you'll see many significant changes when when landscaping plans come forward. And I think if we do, I think it's one of, one of those things as as this list evolves and as things always change over time, especially with plantings, we can take a look at it again. Thank you. Mr. Harshfall. At this time, I'd like to recommend the Common Council approve and adopt the amendments to Section 13.1.250, Table 13-1.250 of the Zoning Ordinance. We have a motion by Mr. Horsfall. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Lytle. We are open for discussion on the motion. Mr. Horsfall. I've always wondered, Adam, how do they come up with the points? I kind of echo Mr. Diaz. Is it some like national trees worth a point mr. sir the point system uh, the point system is based on four things building frontage on the road the linear feet of the roadway the building foundation area impervious surface and then also the square footage of the area so there's four different point categories all together um, each tree or planting is assigned a certain number of points so a climax tree is 75 points a tall tree is 30 points um, I, I think I, I suspect probably how what goes into that is probably as a arborist that looked at them and said well this tree gets bigger than that tree so this one's obviously worth a little more because it gets bigger and taller and more beautiful um, and then this one's pretty but not as big so that will give that one 30 it's it's very subjective I mean it's very is subjective it, is it a national type mm. thing or no I mean Verona or well, this, this type of ordinance that Verona has is it was created by a, a person who works at Vanderwall. So a lot of communities across Wisconsin have a similar point system like okay. this. Um, some communities just say landscaping shall be required and it's left open-ended and then it's applied kind of during the site plan review process on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, in this case, it's applied by these four different criteria through the point system. and. Um, <coughs> Some places do it just strictly by impervious surface. We do it by the four different criteria, but it 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 varies across the board. No, okay. no place is the same. They're all a little different. Other questions or comments, Mr. Linder? Do we have to put in the uh, that we repeal Appendix L into the motion? So I, th I think we need to amend the motion to say repeal of Appendix L of Chapter One of Title Thirteen. We will have that included with the motion. Okay. Other, Mr. Linder? Um, so this is for recommendation for businesses that come. Does this affect people putting stuff in their yard? Mr. Sarah? Nope, no, it does not. This would just be for uh, projects that become for the Planning Commission. So it'd be mostly the non-residential stuff. Obviously, apartment buildings are different, but uh, your house, my house, single family houses. It doesn't affect? It does not affect them, no, okay. not at all. Thank you. Good question. Seeing no other questions, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. So that will be on the council agenda as well on Monday evening. We have no other business before us, Mr. Sayre. Just a quick reminder, the next planning commission meeting is September 2nd. So it's on the Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month, not the first Monday, because that is the holiday. I was going to ask about that. Does that create any conflicts for anyone other than myself? <laughs> Mr. Lytle? I'm not here. Yeah. So that's two. We may want to okay. we may want to check uh, send out an email to the commission. Okay, with no other business before us, a motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Horsfall. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried, and we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.